Welcome to One Foot on the Ground. This is Ashley. And this is Johnny. And today we're watching Portrait of a Lady on Fire. 2019. John, and I, I gotta tell you, it's 2019. And I enjoyed this movie a bunch. So much, in fact, that I was going to tell people it was the best movie of 2019. And then I was like, wait a minute. Midsummer was also made in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny yeah um yeah it was it, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very good it's very good what uh Go ahead. what is it about uh it's painting without consent john <laughs> to put in a sentence um but i thought of that most of the time like because you did the little illustration on your for your Instagram, yeah, <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> and I finally watched it, and the whole time I kept thinking, "Oh, she's right." Yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically, there is um, a young lady named Eloise uh, who is to be married off, and this is late eighteen hundred. So before, like, she doesn't see her husband, but her husband to be is supposed to see her to decide whether or not, like, he's cool with it. So, uh, she has to sit for a portrait to be shipped off to him, and so that she can be wed, and, like, the family can be happy, or her mother, I guess. Uh, because I didn't see any other family members present. Yeah. Uh, and so, the mother hires a, uh, a lady painter to come and paint the portrait, but the catch is that Eloise is not cool on the principle of it. And so she won't sit for her portrait. And so the painter, who uh, Marianne, uh, has to, um, she, she is hired under the guise of being her companion to go on walks with her. And so there's a reason that somebody's going on walks with her. Yes, because her, uh, Eloise's older sister, who was uh, the, the first promised, killed herself, probably for the same principles. Right? Right. Yeah. Uh, and so she jumped off the cliff, off the cliffs, because they live on an island. And so her mother like has like a tight leash on her, but she's like, I'm going to have this painter be your companion so you can go on your walks, but also painter painting you in secret, like by candlelight. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then uh, as the story progresses, so do the relationships between the painter and the subject and uh, the servant, and it's about, you know, art and love and womanhood, I guess, or sisterhood, not womanhood. Womanhood sounds like like, the, like your period. Well, there's some of that. There is, there <laughs> is some of that. You know what, John? I forgot. <laughs> There are periods, and it women... wasn't wasn't quite as a uh, gross as I would have. <laughs> what? Uh, and just for the record, for anyone listening, since this is a fairly new movie, and if you haven't listened to our podcast before, it's going to be full of spoilers. I don't think I can talk about it. Like just now, that description was the least spoilery description I could possibly give. So every other word out of my mouth is going to be true loaded yes yeah, yeah i guess if people are happening upon us because of yeah like oh maybe you should see this movie let's see what they thought and it's just like yeah, we ruin the whole movie. remember that abortion scene <laughs> 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 which sounds like a joke but it's not <laughs> no it's not it is it is real yeah and it and it and it just was you know yeah. like like they were just there I know, I know that the topic of abortion is very serious, yeah. but to me, most of them trying to get her to miscarry was kind of funny to me. 
<laughs> like her been pushing her back and forth, like running, like running back and yeah, like, like, hanging and such. Giving her a concoction while she's hanging from something, and her hang, her feet are dangling in the frame. <laughs> yeah, like I like, thought she. I was like, oh no, like she didn't abort it. Now she's gonna kill herself. And I was like, oh no, she's hanging until like exhaustion. Like she's still like trying to Stress exert her body. body. Yeah. Um, I mean, but like, like I said, it's it's a serious topic, but it was kind of humorous. I no, and I saw that. I chuckled when they were like pushing her back and forth, like running. <laughs> <laughs> like that seems so silly. And then but it was very loved that it was like these three girls determined to f- figure this out. Like, we're going to get this done somehow. We're it was very supportive. Yeah. It was like nobody judged or did any, like, she was just like, she was just like, I haven't had my monthlies in like three months. And then homegirl's like, oh, uh, shit, girl. what? She's like, oh shit, girl. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, because it's, like, well, first of all, with this movie, there weren't, but, like, I don't know, five minutes of footage that had men in it, if that, but there was still, like, there's, like, a, um, like, an overwhelming presence of, like, patriarchy and, like, just, like, men in general. We never... We don't even talk about like the dude like homegirl boned down with, whether or not she loved him, whether or not it was like a choice. Like we don't talk about any of that. Like she's just like, I can't have it. And they were like, You're right, you can't have it. Okay, let's go. Like and they just they all like come together. Even yeah. like present at the abortion, like just like standing and watching mm-hmm. instead of like sitting outside of the house and like letting it happen like instead of just like ignoring it they were like present with her yeah yeah um so go ahead we just like I jumped like in like the we just act. jumped right the <laughs> <laughs> let's get the abortion out of the way uh which is kind of how it felt for them <laughs> let's get this abortion out of the way um well first of all where do we start i mean like you said, I thought the 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 lack of men was obvious to me, but in a good way. Obvious. I mean, I loved it. I loved that, and the men that they did show literally did nothing. Like, <laughs> like yeah, at the they, beginning, they were like it opens drivers. with her because it opens with her teaching a, a sketching class or whatever. Uh-huh. Like she's the teacher. And they ask her about a portrait that some girl, which, by the way, like, I like how some girl pulled out a painting of hers. Like, did somebody say you could touch her shit? But whatever. <laughs> well, that's, that's also what Marianne was like. She was like, um, that's not yours. All right. Like, she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Was it not okay? She was like, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's my painting. <laughs> uh, but it was the portrait of a lady on fire, mm-hmm. which <laughs> was like right off the bat. But, um, yeah, and then it's a whole. The whole film is like a flashback to uh, why that painting even came to exist, basically. But they didn't really go into that painting. You only saw it once, but we saw it, the like the moment that inspired the painting. You mean? No, 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 no. I meant well. I get. I mean, no. You only see the painting, like the oh, portrait okay. of my fire. Like you only see that painting once um, at the very beginning, and then you never see it again. But I loved that because when I was going into this, I, I knew that it was about a, the basic kind of thing. Like it's about a woman that's got a portrait, paint a portrait for a woman that didn't want to sit for one. I knew that, but I did not know basically. I mean, I knew there was going to be some love stuff in there because I figured you can't get that close to somebody in that time period and not start making out all over the place. Because. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that seemed like the obvious thing that was going to happen, but yeah. Um, but uh, what am I saying? Um, oh, but I loved that you got that beautiful imagery of the painting, and then you kind of saw the construction of it from an artist standpoint. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like whenever I do a piece of art, I see where it came from. 
Like, it's very obvious to me what created that. But as a, an observer, if you don't know the story behind somebody, you just see a woman walking towards a beach mm-hmm. and her dress is on fire. You have no idea, like, what, you know, it's like, well, that's interesting. Yeah, like, what, what does that, that mean? Possibly mean? <laughs> and then you finally get to see her whole story. So you get the uh, accumulation of all those things that created that piece. And I, I loved that. I thought that was amazing uh, because it wasn't, it wasn't a straightforward portrait, which is what I was expecting to see when she asked about a painting. I yeah. thought it was just a, a portrait. So I love that it was something more expressive, but then uh so when she got in the boat her that's the next thing you see is like her being rowed to shore yeah and her canvases falls out of the canvas crates falls out of the boat and none of the men even look like they have any interest in trying to help her get it no they so like she, stared you know, at it <laughs> stared at they're like and I, this is what i loved about the presence of men in this film was you've got that in your head like, this is the first time you see men, and it's one of the last times you see until the very, very end. Yeah. So it's funny to me that the only time that you saw men, like I said, until the very end, was them not being helpful at all. And even, like, the guy that brings her stuff up onto the beach, like, he carries it and then shoves it down and is like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. like, you that way. <laughs> bye, have a good day. Um, so anyway, I loved that. I loved that. You you knew right away what kind of story this was going to be, and I thought that was brilliant. Like, you know what I mean? Like, men yeah. are not a part of this. And if they were, they weren't going to do anything. They were useless? They were completely useless. Yeah. Um, then I loved I loved the whole reveal of um, Heloise? Uh, Is that Hel- her name? Heloise? Yeah, Heloise. Yeah. I loved the reveal of her, like how it took a while for us to even see her. And then when we did that was really intense. Yeah, it was good. But I also, oh, the uh, the mother is played by, uh, if you wrote her name down, cool. I did not. Um, No, I didn't. And I meant to because I was like, was she like in Seinfeld? Why is she so familiar? She has been in a lot of things. Um, But she is, in my eyes, most notably in Immortal Beloved. Uh, She's one of the main women in Immortal Beloved. And I freaking love her. And every time I see her in anything, I'm like, oh my God, I love that. (laughs) She's from Immortal Beloved. Uh, (laughs) But she's been in a lot of things. She was in, um, oh God, I can't think of it. I looked her up too, because I was like, what else has she done? But you would recognize her for sure. But she's still freaking young. Like, that woman is aging immaculately. Like, what the hell does she do? <laughs> Not move? <laughs> <laughs> she just poses for portraits. She poses for portraits until somebody calls her in for a movie. <laughs> All she's doing. Oh, uh, Rain, like, she's in Rain Man and Hot Shots. Uh, Shot- oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not where I know her from. Uh, no, but I do remember her from Hot Shots, and I thought that was hysterical. Yeah. Oh, she's in so much. Uh, I should have looked this up sooner. Oh, she has 102 credits. Hold up. Yeah, yeah she's in a lot. She's been, yeah. But I love that she was in this. I thought that was fantastic. So, getting to the actual portrait making first of all it took no time at all for her to do a portrait like she sat with the girl for like two days and she's like oh i'd finished (laughs) and i was like no she she had six days to do it or she had had a week because she was supposed to go back with the mother and so uh we were it went by quickly a lot of this went by quickly because the movie only takes place over two weeks i want to say so the first like that, yeah. first portrait and she was like like doing mock-ups like a ton like trying to figure out like the direction or angles or whatever that she's like going and happy with uh and like sneaking little drawings of her hands uh while she's hanging out by in the grotto or yeah. wherever that was 
uh, but she it, it was over it was over a few days. I think she finished a day or two early. Yes, because like oh she was like I'm all done, but I want to tell homegirl. So I think it was two days early. She finished, and then the next day when they went on a walk, she confessed. Which that's not something I was expecting. I also didn't know much about the movie before watching it. And I was like, oh, this is like moving in um, a different direction, but a direction I prefer because I really didn't. I was like, how are they going to come back from her, you know, like sealing her fate to um, an unseen man, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And then she had confessed to her about it and then wanted to show her first and like was real hurt. When uh, Homegirl was like, this is how you see me? Hmm. Could have done better. I thought you were a painter. <laughs> He's like, shut the fuck up. So she destroys that painting. Yeah. And I actually think that painting is beautiful. Like, I, I hope that somebody kept that. And the, the I, painting. It was very, I really, I want the fudged painting. Like, I want actually, the painting in its fudgeness. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I love that. Yeah. I was wondering... Thinking about it now, if that's the cover of the Criterion release, the fudge, yeah, or do I you think, think it's the one the other, like the dude artist did that, one? Well, that would make sense. set on fire? I gotta look it up because has it been released yet on Criterion? I know it's supposed to be. I I think it already has. Right on. Well, yeah. So the first painting. What I really liked about that is that you can see that it was a good painting, but it also lacked that part that the second one got. Yeah. Like, oh, I, it's, it's, it's a completely different work of art, but it has a smudge face. Oh, uh, through like the, the eyes. Yeah, I yeah. see it. Yeah, so that's a beautiful painting, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I loved um well I I don't know if I loved it or not I was I was not sure of cuz they obviously had a a woman come in and actually do the artwork. Yeah, like, there was it was it was a real did. artist. Like it was like a <laughs> I want I want to call her her like Marianne's like stunt <laughs> double. Yeah, it was like her, uh, her where, double. <laughs> yeah, she was she was painting. Uh, and from the interviews I had listened to, I guess uh, the Naomi, uh, who plays Marianne, I guess she is left-handed, uh, and that she tried to work with the artist to learn art, but, like, they mostly had to focus on, like, where she's supposed to be looking and, like, what the strokes are supposed to look like and, like, the, the gazing and, like, um like what you look for as an artist and then they're like we're just gonna have this other real artist like do it well and that's the thing that i thought was interesting was i I couldn't figure out if the artist actually works the way that she was working or if it was on purpose because it the thing that i noticed the most was that the artist that was doing the work had weird hesitation yes would do anything and i thought that was it made sense for this particular situation for her to do that. Yes. But, and so I couldn't tell if that was the, the way that the artist actually just works or if that was intentional to be like part of the character. I think that it was intentional from what I understand from, uh, like I watched like a Q and a after, um, after they premiered their movie at the Toronto International Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I listened, I listened to an interview elsewhere, so I don't remember which one uh, this came from. It might be a blend of both, but from what I understand, the director, uh, Celine Chiema, is that how you say her last name? Who knows, girl? It's French. <laughs> it's uh, S-C-I-A-M-M-A. We are not yeah. trying to what's your name lady yeah <laughs> uh she seemed to be very um in tune to the little details and so the the actresses of marianne and um eloise 
Naomi and Adele, they had talked about how she knew she was very detail oriented and she knew like whether or not they ended the scene on like an inhale or an exhale and that it was all very like detailed and like the length of things but that the director was also very collaborative in that the two actresses were present during like I want to say it was the dailies where they like reviewed like all the film and everything like that. And they were present in like post-production, like and seeing it in the editing room, seeing what the film was going to look like. Mm-hmm. At, like Which is kind of amazing. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and how they would like watch a scene and there would be instances where um, one of them would like see it and they'd be like, I want to do that line again. I want to do that line and I want to make it like, like when she asked if she wanted to go swimming. Uh, and the other was like, yes, I guess that that was like an example where she was like, no, I want, I want to do that again. I know it's just one word, but I want to like take my time saying mm-hmm. yes, you know? And so I think that the, the hesitation, because I also noticed that I was like, oh, um, yeah. well, you and I, I are also artists. So yes, I, I feel like we would pick up on that more so than a casual viewer that maybe is not artistic. Or maybe we we pick up on it in a different, probably in a different way. Yeah. Like to me, the whole time she was doing it, I kept thinking, just do it, just. Because <laughs> 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 I think I think that was a thing that I was told very early on when I started doing art in middle school was don't be afraid of it. Just yeah, you have to you have to lean into it. You can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're gonna do it, do it. Like, and I remember because I would have the hardest time with um, with shading because I would always do it too too light. Mm-hmm. Like uh, early on, especially like if I showed people my stuff, they're like, "Oh wow, that's really good," but you can hardly see it. And it's true. Like if I look back at this stuff, even if I scanned it or photographed it to try to post it on something, you can barely see any of it. It's like where is it? I feel that. So eventually I figured that out and was able to boldly just make those things darker. So, and it, it helps a lot. Yeah. Um, but I don't do the same kind of art though. I mean, watching somebody, it's so weird to me that I can watch people do this. Like even watching Salvador Dali, I watch him paint and there's some video of him painting and First of all, his him him painting is chaos. Like, <laughs> I don't understand how he got from point A to point B, but you see it happen, you're like, whoa, holy fuck, how did you do that? But, and I don't know how to, well, because <laughs> I can see them do it, and I'm like, oh, well, I could do that. You know what I mean? Like, I could technically do that. I know exactly what you're doing, but if I sat down to do a piece of art um, myself, I have a hesitation that's different than that. Like, I don't have the hesitation on the actual work itself. I have a hesitation on executing it to begin with. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, like I mean, where to begin? Yeah, where to begin and and... I don't know how to exp- I really don't know how to explain that. It's probably not even worth mentioning, I suppose, but it's just Yeah, cut it out. Cut this whole this whole bit out. Cut it out. <laughs> cut it put it on the floor. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I don't know. I, I just I thought it was I anyway, in any case I thought it was interesting. I, I loved I love watching films about artists and when I actually get to see them creating something in a film. I think that's fantastic and if you get it right like this did it it just works well but like sometimes you'll see people doing things in like <laughs> they've got like a damp brush on like something that's very clearly sealed and then they're just like moving over the same line yeah, yeah it just it looks ridiculous it's like well clearly that person isn't good. or you can tell um even jean Cock too had this like well actually it might have been in blood of a poet because in that one he had uh, an actor do the piece of art, and you could tell that Jean Cocteau had drawn him a guideline of where he was supposed to sketch. So, <laughs> oh yeah, like oh, no. you'll see, like it's almost it's like gently drawn, like yeah, yeah. yeah and like then they just go over, over it. 
darker. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. I mean, I guess I guess technically you don't see a whole lot of films about artists, so not as many as in ratio to other things, but Yeah, I think that this movie in particular, uh also it just felt really weird. I don't know why to call it a movie because I I would rather call it a film, so that felt really weird for like no reason. Uh, but but this picture in particular was very intimate, and I think the the act of like Marianne painting, like was in was just an intimate as and added to the intimacy of the film. You know, it's not she's not just painting a person; she's falling in love with a person. And, and I think I think that was interesting to see Eloise's reaction to the first painting. And because at, at the time that she gets revealed as the artist and that she has made a painting, you don't there's no loving relationship between. Them. I mean, you can tell that there was something under the surface that neither one of them wanted to address, but it, it hadn't gotten anywhere. So yeah when you see that first painting yes it's good and like she said like yeah okay but it's also you can tell that how do you explain that like she it was very obvious to me i mean as an artist i guess maybe that does make a difference like when you're doing something um i guess offline is a good way to say it like she was painting that from memory and yeah. from sketches that she had to do quickly like she wasn't doing it from the experience of having somebody sit in front of you and you can actually see them and connect with them in a different way so you could tell that there was no connectivity in that first work and that's what was pointed out and that's why she got rid of it and then when you saw the second one the second one was much much better and it was you could tell that it was just more precious if that makes sense yeah it had it, i think that was because it included um like a smile like the yeah the smile the that, fan, yeah. She, that she couldn't get before because uh she took her time being funny true yeah well i also thought <laughs> i also love that <laughs> she like to go along with your your sketch that you did and like what was your, the title of your sketch it was it, the portrait of a lady on fire it was a uh, painting without consent painting without consent i yes. also thought like <laughs> like kind of i can't do as clever as you but like basically you have the task of painting somebody with resting bitch face like <laughs> <laughs> because, and that's the thing like by no means is this woman unattractive the the eloise was gorgeous that yeah. woman was absolutely stunning but but she did she definitely did have like a, a resting face that was not it did it did not have joy in well, it well she that they mentioned that too they yeah. they said your anger always comes through <laughs> yeah which i think was their way of saying resting bitch face back yeah then. <laughs> like, like, she was like you're angry and it's always present oh, like always. it's always at the surface <laughs> <laughs> but she was when she did smile it was beautiful like she she really did light up beautifully when she finally did like when they were playing cards uh, and she was laughing yeah both like, of them i really enjoyed seeing all of them smile during that card scene like yeah. it was just it was nothing but they were all just bonding it was nice yeah. i think my favorite scene though in the whole film that oh, like, I, hope I, I hope i know where you're going with this i hope well it's like the first time you see like a glimmer of a smile in eloise uh it, it, was, it was something i like had connected with a ton too so it might just be like a personal like or it might be more personal than anything but when she's watching marianne play the piano and marianne's playing music that is more lively than she's ever heard before because one of the one of the points in the film is that Eloise is, uh, was living uh, in a convent before yes. she came back. And she, like, her favorite part was the music. But the music 
if you've ever been to like a Catholic church, is very like oh and like old and yeah. just like it's it's beautiful in its own right, but as like a whole, it's kind of dreary. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and Marianne was kind of like 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 it it's difficult to describe a concert you know like yeah. she was like it's hard to tell you what it sounds like and what it feels like without having experience it which also i think mm -hmm. is like something that later on goes to define whatever their relationship was like before it like blossoms mm -hmm. but when she goes and starts playing the piano and eloise is like watching her and I don't want to say falling in love with her because, like, I believe that she already had, like, passion for her before that. Yeah. Uh, but, like, it was just, like, fine, like that loving moment. And then Marianne, like, says something stupid and, like, ruins the moment, like, right after. And she's like, oh, you're going to love being married off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And Milan, they have all this great music. Yeah. Like, thanks a lot, bitch. I got to get married. Um. <laughs> she's like oh yeah like she and it's and it's like and the whole movie doesn't have a um a soundtrack right we hear music when marianne plays it we hear music when like the um acapella at that festival oh of gosh, service I didn't even think of that. and then we hear really right. the song um that we heard with marianne um at the end uh but yeah there's no music it's just a lot of like silence and it just like builds tension and so we don't have any musical cues throughout the film to tell us how we're supposed to feel we just have to live in the same anxious and uncertainty as the rest of these women oh which, i love that i, didn't, I, I didn't loved think, i, I loved like you like pulled that. in like that like and i also hated it there were times where i was like <laughs> like like well, I would the tension, also... the tension in general was high on this. Like I was anxious for a lot of it, and I, I mean, obviously, I, I think I, what is uh, like subconsciously, I think all that stuff was there. Like I, I, I didn't realize there was no score until you just mentioned it. I was like, oh yeah. yeah. I did think, however, at one point, I think it was at the end actually, when I was like, oh, I wonder if there's a soundtrack to this because I really. <laughs> Because I loved the music that was in there, but then I didn't realize, and I thought, oh, what would they put in there? Like, there's two songs. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it didn't occur to me there was no score, technically, or whatever, at work. There wasn't. I'd listen to the soundtrack of them, like, walking across those floors, and, like, the scripts of the the painting. Like, oh, yeah. like don't get me wrong, the sounds that were in the, the film were nice. No, it, it it was beautiful. This whole film was beautifully done. <clears throat> very very good um i was going i was going to say something um was it about the music was it about the chanting okay that i fucking loved like when, i loved it and it was kind of a shock when it started like i was kind yeah, of like you're what? like oh no 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 they're gonna do some weird satanic stuff to yeah. get rid of this baby <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, oh, Midsommar, no, no. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it just, it became this beautiful, beautiful scene <clears throat> with, um, it just, a female positive too, it was just beautiful. Yes. And then, and then to see the, the result of that was the moment where her dress catches on fire and she walks the, uh, it was just, it was so beautiful. I love, I love the whole, I just loved it. I loved it, loved it. But, um, it, it, there was a couple of things. So, first of all, I wanted to point out the mother's portrait, um, was done by her father. Yes. Marianne's father. Yeah. yeah Marianne's father. And she was going to inherit the business. So she technically was probably never going to get married. And I mean, well, besides the fact that she was Eloise still... made point to tell her that she had a choice, and that was the difference between the two of them. Yes, like she didn't and have. She to didn't get have married, to marry but... because she had a, she had an income. She had a business. Yeah, which I yeah. think is something we talked about with uh, sense and sensibility. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
my poor sense and sensibility. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also um, in the 1800s. They were like, yeah. sense and sensibility was like the first half, and this is the latter half. So maybe yeah. there were more privileges uh, for women. Wait a minute. Wouldn't this be? It's like the late 1800s. I would have thought this would have been before the events of sense and sensibility. Because the gowns were starting to become different. Like we, the, the like I think Portrait of a Lady on Fire feels like it's the beginning. Speaking of the gowns, yeah, uh, and the collaboration with the director, uh, the director brought uh, Celine brought her DOP and um, her costume designer, and they like went and looked at different like old like paintings and such from different periods at like museums and everything to get like a sense of picture and style. I thought that was a, that was fun. That was a very fun uh, fact. I, I thought of you when I heard that. Oh, that's okay. oh, I would do that. I would hundred percent do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, what was I saying? What were you going to say? You're talking about uh, you thought that this one was sooner. The, True. The, the events in here were beforehand. I think it's 1877. Is this one? Uh, let me look up when Sense and Sensibility is. But I don't think that the reason I I don't think that they were trying to define a certain because it, it felt like I don't know how to explain that it felt to me that like the end scene at the 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 concert uh, oh fact, yeah the oh. dress the dressing in that felt older than the rest of the movie if that makes sense so I kind of wondered if it was backwards does that make sense because i feel like you're going towards jane austen eventually because you know wigs are going to start coming off and <laughs> gowns are going to get much more comfortable in jane austen like they're way uncomfortable back with this portrait of lady on fire period because you're still wearing the corsets yes i mean you've had corsets for sense, sense and sensibility so oh it was published in 1811 Huh. Maybe it's just the the difference in difference between in, your uh Britain and Brittany, France. Yeah, I was thinking maybe that's a geographic situation. Maybe the yeah. difference in, in clothing. Anyway, whatever. It, that's not the point. But my, the, uh, I was going to bring up the mother's portrait. So it, I just love that they highlighted so you knew why this portrait was necessary and why it was happening. Because this is a thing. Yes. Like, daughters that are going to be married off to somebody, like, it's much easier for you to send a portrait ahead of the daughter so that the guy can say yay or nay on whether or not he wants to marry this person. Yeah, it was like, the Tinder of the time, that. except the lady didn't have a vote. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, too, because if you think about it, like, why do you think there are so many portraits of women? in time like you don't yeah. see a huge i mean unless you're a man of importance like a king or a yeah a being like uh portrayed with your hunting dog and your rifle yeah. yeah and very symbolic because you know that those motherfuckers did not look like a lot of that shit like i know uh what was it the the sun king louis the whatever i don't know one of the french <laughs> i'm familiar with louis the whatever <laughs> he um if you watch versailles that, that show is about that guy but, like, I remember um, learning in college uh, <laughs> when I went to it, with the, like, that particular time period, like, Louis obviously was getting old, but in order for him to appear important and still strong enough to rule the country, they would paint him with, like, his legs showing, and he'd have very strong-looking legs. Which like, he probably had died out the competition. Yeah. It's seriously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so if you ever see those paintings, it's like, yeah, clearly that's not what his legs would have looked like if your face looked like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 not not a thing, but you know, good try. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the kind of portraiture you would see for men. So it's very interesting to see why throughout history there are so many portraits of women like it's it's a sexist disgusting thing but at the same time like it's interesting that you would have 
these portraits of women versus men more so so that they're technically remembered more do you know yeah. what i mean like i mean think about that like leonardo which portraits of men did he ever do like i don't i don't recall very many i mean except for jesus uh, <laughs> i'm sorry was uh was uh the mona lisa not a dude no there's like theories that like I know, but I'm not, I'm not in the... What is it, conspiracy theories that it was, like, a dude? I think it was just a very wealthy patron. Like, I, I don't... <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the other thing, too. Like, that's, again, the same kind of situation. Like, you would probably have some patrons that would want portraits of themselves done if they're whatever. But you saw, again, more so you would see commissions of their wives or their daughters or you know something that they're proud of that they want to show off not necessarily yeah, themselves. their objects yeah they're uh, exactly again sexist but at the same time women are more documented Woo -woo! so i was gonna say that uh something i did enjoy that um uh celine shiama shiama whatever uh had said about like the film like her what she wanted to display or what she wanted people to get from the movie is that um she wanted to break the idea of like the fetish of the muse which is like a silent woman that um like you know a man is inspired by and she just sits silently and he paints her you know mm -hmm. because she is like this beautiful thing but that like that models were in the room they were collaborators right yeah. so like that the art was a collaboration between the painter and the subject and i i think that's why i really enjoyed the the scene like after the abortion when they um were taking care of sophie mm -hmm. and um uh, eloise was like uh like everyone was awake and Eloise was like oh we're gonna do a thing then and like poses Sophie and her to kind of they pose in the same to kind of reenact the um the abortion so that Marianne can can paint you know like like Eloise like do this like like document this yeah and Marianne, yeah, probably, like, yeah that was very interesting I I love that yeah. Okay, so that was that goes a little bit along with the tension that I was talking about. So the first part of the movie where she's doing the first portrait, there wasn't as much tension. I guess there was some because Eloise didn't know. But when the mom left and the girls were left alone and she had to do the second portrait and they're gone time. and now it's party time, like they're doing all kinds of things, getting abortions and having sex and just all kinds of <laughs> Oh, and doing um, armpit drugs? Armpit drugs, yes. Yes, yeah. I'm thinking that was like a a weed, like weed of some sort. I was... Because she said it was like a plant. It was a plant that makes you and... Feel flying. Yeah, it, um, it makes time last longer. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah, I like that. That was good. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so they do all the crazy shit. And the whole time I kept thinking, the mom's going to come home early. Mom's going to come home early. Mom's <laughs> going to come home early. <laughs> I was like, hurry up and get all this done. Hurry up. All the women, have all the sex and then be done. Put your clothes on. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, the mom came home, but it wasn't about them getting caught. Nobody was reprimanded for their well, action. Nobody got caught. Yeah. Nobody, nothing. Yeah. It just, that was it. And then she had to go. Um, yeah. Getting to that, though. So uh, you pointing out the music was interesting because I was thinking, and this, again, because I'm so familiar with Immortal Beloved, which is about Beethoven. Oh. So I love that this film was one of the first ones. And I, I think this might just me be like me collecting weird information about time period because <laughs> i love different times i'm not too happy with our current times so i like to look at other ones but i love that this film kind of presented music 
and probably because there was a lack of music through the whole thing, basically. But you, at the end of this film, which we'll get into more of the end of it, but I wanted to point out the music part because music at the time, like especially like when Beethoven was around and doing his thing, his music was considered lascivious. Like women were, you know, not always allowed to hear it sometimes because it was too sexual, which, you know, you, if you think about it, in our time period, like we've got, I mean, good lord, all kinds of bullshit now. Where well, sometimes music can be very sexual. I mean, that's an understatement, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, not even like music lyrics, just like the. To explain. Let me let me pull out my my piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say this was one of the first times that I think. It came across beautifully, but I, but at the same time, I think that's a, a, a knowledge that if you knew about the effect of music on people at the time, then you would get the powerful impact of the end of the movie. But I think if you don't, I mean, you still get something out of it because of the story that you just saw. But I think for me, it was interesting because like like even her saying like you like trying to describe a concert is almost impossible and it didn't occur to me because like i said we have technology now like earbuds headphones portable devices record players i mean we had all this shit at home but that's not what they had back then yeah they had none of that so if you were going to hear music if you're lucky enough to have a piano in your house yay but it's just a piano you don't have a full orchestra so if you went to see a symphony performed I can't even imagine what that would be like for somebody that you you have no idea. Like you literally have no idea the the wall of sound that would come at you, the sitting in an audience for something like that would be incredible. I think it's. Don't, I think that I mean, still stands true though. I think that the experience of listening uh, to something through a speaker, as as great as our technology is today. Mm -hmm. It's still they're they're trying really hard to get close, but it's not it's still not the same. You can no. you can feel a concert. You can feel oh, yeah. the orchestra. Even when you're seeing like um like a theatrical production with like the the orchestra pit, like yeah. you still feel that reverb through your bones. You know? Exactly. It's it's kinda like um the Phantom of the Opera is a nice example. I mean I don't know if I could sit through that whole thing, but it's <laughs> like <laughs> listening to it, listening to it on a soundtrack, you know, yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. And if you have the right kind of system, it can really do something. But if you're in a, in a, in a theater that is designed to withhold that, like a, a that has an organ. It has like acoustic. Yeah. Like if you have an organ built into your, your theater, and you're using that to perform parts of the Phantom of the Opera, you're going to feel that way more than if you just sat at home and listened to it and thought, oh, this is great. Like, yeah. <laughs> kind of like uh, our Tampa theater that does the the live music to silent films. Like, when yeah. I went and saw Metropolis, my first thought was, I don't know how we're going to sit here for this long, because they had the restored version that had all the missing elements added back in, so it's like, Oh. I want to say over two hours of silent film. And, <laughs> and I can only imagine, like, I mean, I like it because it's me, but at the same time, I kept thinking, I'm going to sit in this theater for two hours watching a silent film. But then the live organist doing their job, that was incredible. And it's way better than sitting at home watching it or what, you know what I mean? Like, it, it makes a huge yeah. difference. But my thing is, is, Yes, that's true for us today as well. Like a, a live concert is obviously going to be way more exciting than sitting at home. But they had no point of reference. We have that point of reference where we've heard this artist's music and then we go see them and it's way more exciting. Yeah. We have that. But if you're talking about them at home, like maybe somebody can play the piano, like I said. Like, but could they play it like maybe Beethoven? Get, like, a, a sense. Yeah, you get you you know what music is, but until you've actually gone to a an orchestra and had that symphonic thing, like I'm saying, like it 
it'd be incredible. So that's what I, I, I love that about this film that that finally clicked for me in a weird way where I knew it. I mean, I knew that people had reactions to It's just like people having reactions to the first film where the train was coming at them and oh, they, they run out, away? started moving out of the way because they thought the train was coming to, you know, hit them. Yeah. Like it's the same kind of thing. Like that tech, like it, audiences today don't get that. Like people don't get the thrill of cinema. If you think about it from your modern standpoint, just like watching 2001 a space odyssey and taking for granted that that's not, and none of that is computer generated or computer aided in any way. It's all natural photographed, things so and that was before we had been to space right yes yes yeah, right so. in fact i think the first thing said on the moon was uh one giant step for man whatever that thing is that he says oh, uh one small step for, for man one giant leap for mankind there you go and then uh the second thing that was said on the moon was they asked him what does it look like and he said it looks like 2001 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's why that's where that conspiracy theory comes from. Where uh, Stanley Kubrick directed the the moon landing, the first moon landing, which whatever, that's yeah. stupid. But it, and it, but it's because it, he had produced 2001: A Space Odyssey well, before we landed on the moon, and it looked quite like, like quite Europe. similar. Yeah, uh, which I mean, that's just a credit to how fucking amazing Stanley Kubrick is, yeah. and how insanely detail oriented Stanley Kubrick was. Yeah. Because that was in production for the longest time, and he wanted to make sure that he was going to depict it as realistically as he humanly possibly could. There are flaws in it now that we know how things work, but mm -hmm. he didn't know that at the time, so those flaws are forgiven. Thank you, Stanley. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, but the end of the film itself, I thought was... It, it's one of those where I was completely satisfied i mean yes it's sad because spoiler alert they do not get together <laughs> this is not well, 2020 we, we know that in the beginning of the movie i mean yeah you or pretty, we uh, we have that idea rather they could have twisted it and they could have been like married more well, not married but like hags i guess they could have been like old hags living in the same house together like her refusing the marriage and going to live with her painter lady yeah. She would have done that, technically. But she would have been shunned by her family. and Well, yeah. Like, a lot of the film was an obligation. Like, everyone had, like, their duty. Like, yeah. Marianne, at some point, didn't want to paint the painting anymore. Mm -hmm. She didn't want it. Because she didn't want, or rather, she wanted to paint the painting. She didn't want it to be sent off to her husband. Like yeah. she didn't want it to be good enough for the the husband to be um to be like, Yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and then like, you know, and with uh the servant Sophie, she couldn't have the the baby and it wasn't like nobody it wasn't a matter of question. Like Marianne didn't question Eloise as to why she was going to the husband even though she didn't want to or the husband, yeah. the husband to be even though she didn't want to there wasn't like anything there wasn't like i can't believe you're painting this portrait of me when you're on the same page and it was like it was because that was like her job that's like all the obligations that these these women just fulfilled you know yeah. when it didn't seem like any one of them if they could choose would be willing participants yeah you know and it's not that, like, they couldn't choose. Like, Sophie could have had the baby. Marianne could have. Like, Marianne messed up the first the first painting, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, where she had a moment where she, like, broke that bond. Uh, and then Eloise could have I followed her sister and just, like, jumped the cliff or ran away or, you know. Yeah. But they didn't. I think that's where... I think that's where we get that feeling of like the presence of a patriarchy. Um, and I also think that something I also I really enjoyed was that since these women were all of different classes, like, you know, oh, yeah. very clearly upper class, the painter had to have been like middle class, maybe, yeah. maybe upper work, mid. Work, working class. Of working some class. Sort. Yeah. 
And then like Sophie was a servant, but then at some point, like their class standards didn't matter. Like in that house, you know, they were all, they were all equals. In that weekend or the week that they spent together. Yeah. And that was like another thing with the, with the whole muse and collaborator thing. Like they, they were equals when they started, when she started posing and then yeah, equal, like equals when they were like, spending alone time together like not painting you know Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i i yeah (laughs) (laughs) i really did i love this the whole thing i thought it was so beautifully done um filmed k john what filmed in 8k she didn't want to she wanted the vibrant the dynamic colors to come through and so Homegirl filmed it in 8K instead of 35 millimeter. Oh, okay. Yeah, I Good. thought that. I thought that was a. Uh, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was. I meant to share that with you sooner, like before the podcast. <laughs> 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 like when I learned it, I was like, "Oh, that's that's very cool." Okay, I dig it. I think I think that makes a lot of sense from a filmmaker standpoint. If you're going to make a gorgeous piece of cinema like this, especially a time uh, period film, a period film, yeah. like like Stanley Kubrick did with Barry Lyndon, like you taking the technology that you have today and putting it back in a time period, that makes the most sense to me. Which is, like I said, that's what Stanley did. He took as the, the most technological things that he could find, especially lenses that could pick up low light, Mm-hmm. And he took it to that time period. He didn't, you know, like I, I, there's only one artificially lit scene in the entire Barry Lyndon film. It is oh. one of my favorites, but it's <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> one of my uh, <laughs> I want to rave about the naturally lit stuff, but uh, let's talk about this artificial. <laughs> what is funny? Though, I mean, obviously, the 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 naturally lit scenes are absolutely incredible. In fact, every um period film after Barry Lyndon became different because they had a standard that they had to live up to that they they didn't have before. Like if you watch period films that came out before Barry Lyndon, they're very different because they're studio lit. They're they don't have a natural quality to them at all because you'd be lit by candles if you were in that time period. So that's one of the things that I love about period films in general, but I love that Stanley had the initiative to do something like that, to make people want to change how you see these things or whatever. Um, so I think it's very smart for modern filmmakers to take the technology like that and to literally transport into a different time period so that you can get that quality. Because that's what I want to I want to see it. I want to see it exactly how it's supposed to look. Yeah. And, and I like, think that's why I forgive a lot of films, um, in time, like period films in general. I forgive them if there's not much going on because I just enjoy watching them. I don't give a shit. Like you could literally just, uh, I mean, it could be a, like a weird reality show of some sort in a time period and I'd be totally happy with it. Like I don't care that they're not doing anything. Like if they're just sitting there, like drinking eating, their tea, drinking drinking tea, talking sure. about the weather, yeah, or not, just enjoying the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that, hundred yeah. percent. I agree. I agree, and and to that same effect, um, bringing it back to this movie, uh, the whole thing is beautifully photographed, like all the colors. Oh, you get it, yeah, just like let it play. Yeah. Put, put a little screen in a frame. Just let it play. On the- yep. I agree. So, the end of the film, mm-hmm. we get, you know, obviously she leaves. Well, she has to be, well we have to... Before, before we get to the end of the film, we should probably talk about that one, the one thing that's haunting Marianne, uh, something that they read. Uh, what is it? Oh, Orpheus. Orpheus and... um. Uh, Eur- really, Eurydice? Wait. Eurydice? You're, 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 <laughs> I want to say Euripides, but it's definitely not. 
your your whatever paradise and i thought paradise? that was fascinating that they they had that whole i forgot about that um because i want to do orpheus at some point the jean cartoon film mm-hmm. so i thought that was hysterical that they all of a sudden we're talking about orpheus i was like oh i know this i know this i know they're talking about <laughs> yeah i think i i think was that the book that marianne brought that uh she gave to i couldn't Elvis? tell I wasn't sure. I mean, I figured since she asked for a book, I would assume she, that that's yeah, probably she the, book the book. That's when I was like, oh, there's a class difference. <laughs> like, um, and then, yeah, and she just gave her, the, like, whatever book it was, and she just, like, left and started reading. I was, well, I was curious if that was the book, if, like, Marianne then gave it to her. I mean, I hope so. That's, <laughs> that's my hope. That's my. Uh, I'm gonna just go with that. I like. Yeah. That. Do you wanna Do you wanna tell the the story? The story that they um. Well, it's about Orpheus and Eurydice. Your, good God. Eurydice. Eurydice. You're. E U R D I C E. You. I can't. Eurydice. Yep. Nailed it. You're, you're, something like that. I mean, yeah. I've I've watched Orpheus a billion times, and he says her name a lot, but. <laughs> <laughs> But can I say it? Probably not. Anyway, so basically the story of Orpheus in a nutshell is his wife dies and he's not happy with that. So he follows death into the underworld uh, to get his wife back. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the original story goes because I've only seen the Jean Cartou and Black Orpheus, which is another brilliant film but they're very similar yeah but the whole point is that he goes to the underworld to get his dead wife and bring her back but the rule is that he can't turn to look at her now in the ones that i've seen he can't turn to look at her like at all like even on earth but in the original which i believe is what they were reading he can't turn to look at her until after they've passed through the door that Exit. Yeah, the entire mm-hmm. time that they're in um, Haiti or the underworld, uh, he can't uh, look at her. The, well, the only stipulation is that he can't turn around. Yes. Like, he has to do his thing, and he cannot turn around. And so, as we uh, carry on, like, that's the that's the scene, the pivotal scene that they're, that they're reading. Yes. And they're kind of, and I love the fact that they have a debate about it. Like, yeah, and then they read it again it. so that you can also hear it again like i love that they didn't cut that uh like they didn't shorten that no i love i loved that whole sequence i thought that was brilliant especially because it is kind of a, a an interesting um thing to argue like why did he turn around like he yeah. didn't need to he could have just finished the journey and they would have been cool everything would have been fine yeah yeah so at the at the last moment before they leave or he, he turns, turns around. He turns yeah. and he looks at his, you know, his wife, and her soul is now uh, damned to the underworld indefinitely. Indefinitely, yes. Yeah. So, and the, you know, one of the arguments is like he he was so enamored by her and wanted to see her so badly that he couldn't wait. Yeah. Which you know is a valid argument, but at the same time, like, well, fuck you. You could you could have had her for forever now the jean cop two one that always kind of like we'll get into that when we do that but his was more interesting well not more interesting but interesting because in his version the rule was he couldn't look at her ever again like they would just have to live their entire lives together without seeing each other face to back to back yeah so (laughs) so you know that whole thing is different but and we'll get into that later when we do that but um but yeah i thought that was a good a very good thing for them to bring up yeah and the, the debate that they had was why did he look at her um he was being a fool because you know he he did something that was only that was so short-lived when like if he could have uh been more patient you know, he would have had a longer love life. And then something that Eloise brought up was that maybe his wife told him to turn around. Maybe he would rather him 
see like have that final moment with her you know instead of whatever whatever sort of life that they were going to live outside of this um maybe you know maybe the, he couldn't look at her again you know and it didn't but the the way in this movie it seemed like it was just after the gates um yes. but yeah the she was just like you know give up on me um or move on from me mm -hmm. rather and that that was like a very like very sad but also powerful moment in the film and then throughout we see um different moments of marianne going through the house like at night or in the dark and uh, she's like she has these yes. premonitions of um of eloise in white like not just like a white gown but like a white face she looks like a ghost it is uh, it absolutely stunning. ghost of her um in different parts of the home just staring at her i i love those moments so much yeah every, and then, like and then every time they did the, it we get we get to the um the ending where like the first moment we see we see a man mm -hmm. we, we see a man before we see the mother right and mm -hmm. we're like oh like this is this is the thing that's been knocking at the door this is the thing that like they didn't want to acknowledge it's like here now and now like something needs to be done is there enough time to how do they say their goodbyes like it's like it seems like just seeing like a new person in the house just like sends like a lot of like stress through you mm -hmm. or like as a viewer it's just like oh yeah. like oh yeah like this is the, it, today's the day <laughs> um, oh, yeah. and uh and yeah and so they like you know there's not a whole lot of time for marianne and eloise to like talk in the morning uh the mother comes in they show the painting she's like it's good we'll have it uh sent out and then you are gone marianne thank you for all your hard work and eloise i got a gift for you come with me this way and so uh marianne gathers some things and goes to say goodbye and it's like a really sad like and quick yeah. like, so like like it was like maybe a second long hug and it was like oh, oh, like it was it yeah. i also loved that she hugged the mother first yeah and the mother was like why are you <laughs> hugging me <laughs> but i love that that was very obvious to us as an audience that she hugged her mother so that she'd have an excuse to hug her as well yes like, oh, oh stop it oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was gonna point out that a lot of gay cinema is like this where well, you get this we we constantly get these fucking stories like why can't we ever be in love damn it <laughs> oh and like that that uh when eloise went on a walk for alone for the first time and marianne told her like that she could feel free oh and, yeah. and she was like freedom and being alone but i would have preferred your company or something mm -hmm. there, yeah. or, there was a liberty in being alone but it wasn't what like i wanted or i can't remember the exact line that she had said and i was like oh, yeah. oh. oh i love yeah. that Oh my goodness. So yeah. before, because they had a whole conversation um, about how, you know, Marianne made like a cameo for herself to take with her, which was a, a small oh, portrait yeah, I of almost forgot Eloise. That. And we, this is a very important moment. So <laughs> we're giving it everything away. Given it everything. Was important. It seems like every moment in the movie is an important moment. <laughs> I think the whole film is an important moment. So sorry if you haven't seen the movie. Don't worry, we're describing it perfectly. <laughs> just oh. out of order. <laughs> <laughs> it's just very out of order. But they, uh, she, she does her own little portrait, and then uh, Eloise wants something, you know, and those eloquent, eloquent words spoken and all that kind of shit. <laughs> so definitely watch it. Yeah, um, she is. She wants a photo for herself. Like, yeah, like well, I don't want me off without an image of you. Like, hello. So she picks a page in the book, page 28. And I was like, thank goodness that page was mostly blank. <laughs> 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 so she did a self portrait of herself, a lounging mood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for Eloise and then uh so anyway so then everything says goodbye and you get a flash forward back to the studio um 
she's wrapping up with her student and blah 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 and then she has flashes basically telling us the audience how the last two times that she saw her well so wait we're forgetting we're forgetting the first ending the first ending where she gives that hug goodbye and then she goes to leave and she's like oh, running wait. out because she's like so like like she can't stay you know and like what what is she, she's just like trying to like run away oh. from things she's feeling and oh, I, I just got chills. I just got chills because I finally figured <laughs> I just connected the Orpheus thing. <laughs> and so Eloise said, turn around, and she turns around, and we see that ghostly image that has been haunting her up until this point. And it's like, oh, like oh. it like kicks oh. it out of you. <laughs> oh, it was such a blow. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then, yeah, and then we go back. To the art studio and she she tells us that she saw her two times after that yeah. uh the first time was at a gallery where she had a portrait of um well uh Maryam had portraits under her father's name <laughs> uh you know because it's more respected yeah women are only tolerated i guess when they draw male figures but she had a portrait of um orpheus and his lady and they're like oh you're picturing him like looking at her you know yeah like saying goodbye people, people usually don't don't get this angle yeah they usually get the the end result and not the the moment of departure. that that really boned them <laughs> <laughs> the, the bum moment yeah. uh anyway so then she's reading her pamphlet and realizes that there's a portrait well i mean you don't exactly she's, know she, what yeah mean. we we just know that eloise must be like a name on there the, there's a name yeah eloise yeah. is somehow in this gallery or whatever so she's ripping across the room getting through all the men yeah and, and, uh, and you know and and i thought that we were going to see like her you know i did too yeah i thought she was going to be there i thought maybe she was one of the patrons or something yeah or yeah but but you know. it turns out it's a portrait of her and her daughter who's mm -hmm. what i don't know five or six or something yeah her and, and a small child who knows it's well, hers yeah, yeah maybe it's just a random kid uh, <laughs> and another and beautiful painting by the way beautiful it was painting. yeah it was her her daughter and um her holding a book uh, and it's significant that she's holding the book because the book is open. being held uh what do you call it with her fingers in it so like, it's propped open slightly yeah like she's holding her spot in the book yes yeah and, and it's page 28 and you're like <laughs> <laughs> i cried <laughs> i cried a lot uh, <laughs> But I also, there was a moment there, and me as an artist, I kind of had an interesting feeling about that moment in that gallery. Because on one hand, I think it was before they showed that it was page 28 that she had the book propped open to. There was this sense I got that having had such an intimate relationship with somebody that you painted literally like an artist and the model i felt that having that strong connection with eloise would cause me personally if it was me i would feel betrayed in some weird way does that make sense i'm yeah, not saying i i think it. i think at this time that like i mean painting without consent man maybe she was just like oh like uh we'll do a painting but you have to include this book is the well that's it's something that's, like that's, i was considering because like because because of the collaboration she had with um marianne mm -hmm. uh it no, gave me the impression that all she, of her portraits <laughs> yeah. well it all gave me the impression that she um she's very strong strong-minded and strong-willed and yes like you know she wouldn't sit for the painter before so if she sat down for this maybe she did it like on her terms you know yeah like paint me as i am and the you know the page number perhaps was like still thinking of you like i'm doing this but it's i don't forget i'm not forgetting you well that's kind of what like i said i was getting to that jealous moment in my own head like i don't <laughs> i don't know exactly if that was what was supposed to be portrayed for the character in the film but to me, that's what I was feeling. I was like, oh, shit, this girl got another portrait done, and it's good. Damn it. Like, <laughs> like oh, she definitely had to sit for it. <laughs> she had to sit for that shit. 
I, I, I felt one. I felt the same, but I think the page number made me well, be that's, like, that's oh, where, that one. Yeah, that's where it got me to flip my feelings. Yeah. I was like, oh, page because like, like I said, because like you said, like getting to that moment, like you know, did the artist notice that she always had her hand in the book at 28 or did she ask specifically to have it in there? Either way, the fact that 28 ended up in the painting is a big deal. Like yeah. it's, you know, or maybe she was intimate with the painter in a different way and, and was confessing to them, like this whole story of her previous portrait. You know what I mean? Like yeah, maybe. that could be a thing. Maybe you know? it's only her second portrait that she sat down for and she and like during during the painting process she tells yeah. i assume it's a him him the story it, it, po- well I because mean, it's, it's on sale gallery. at this at this gallery right. i assume it's a him that's what i was thinking too yeah and it's got to be a dude unless it's another woman another woman it's her dad. <laughs> yeah but it only ended platonically because she put in 28 <laughs> true true so then you get the second ending the second time she saw her which was at the symphony the third ending. they're both the what the third ending the third ending i'm sorry the third ending <laughs> what's <laughs> ending uh so you see her at the the orchestra but eloise never saw all marianne is that what her name is marianne? yes i'm asking at the very end of this <laughs> <laughs> After we said it a million times. Uh, Marianne saw Eloise, but Eloise never saw Marianne. Never saw her. But, but that, they, oh, it's so good. Well, I, hold, hold. I got to complain about something real quick. So I know probably from a filmmaker standpoint, it was more visually interesting to have them cut across people that were already sitting to get to their seats. But if you're watching <laughs> both of those moments, because they do it for both characters, like Marianne does it first, and then you see Eloise do the same thing. And <laughs> but it drove me nuts because there were doors behind them. <laughs> and I was like, why didn't you just go to the correct door and then sit down? <laughs> like they had it, like, like Marianne specifically went in one door and passed like, two sets of doors on her way to her chair like like you could have just gone down any maybe one they of were those off for maintenance <laughs> maybe but then eloise did the exact same thing and i was like y'all is crazy but then again i don't know but i don't know because like, i was also thinking um in a weird way i feel like going to the symphony maybe not i don't i don't know i i would say in the dangerous liaisons france that time frame you would want to be seen in your gown so my thought was maybe that was part of it was you want to be seen so in order to be seen in your gown you would cause us some kind of thing like that where people had to move and it was very obvious that you were moving across somewhere you know what i mean yes. i mean maybe i don't know i don't know if that's what it is but that was one of my thoughts anyway so <clears throat> we get to the end <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the the song that uh, Marianne had played for Eloise when she was trying to describe a concert to her mm-hmm. is the song that uh, is being played at this concert. Oh, so good. And Marianne <laughs> sees Eloise, and Eloise is just fixed on the concert. And we don't know if this is her first. I'm assuming it's not. Uh, but we do know it's significant for the same for Marianne. Yeah. You know? And we, the shot holds on Eloise for over two minutes. Yeah. Where we see her try to, her, her, we see her experience it and we see her almost celebrate and long for Marianne and mm-hmm. because she begins to cry. But she, she, we just see Eloise in like high emotions of all things. Well, know? and it's also interesting because she's hyperventilating almost. Yeah. Well, she. I think she's like holding back like a sob, <laughs> like like a hard, yeah. a hard cry. But you also have to think, um, 
with the corsets that they'd have to wear, breathing was like you don't want to get emotional because you would probably pass out because the you can't do that. Like you can't hyperventilate in a corset. Um, that's why they had fainting couches. Yeah. And or you know areas like that, like where you would have to drag a lady across the room until <laughs> set a chair <laughs> and, and fan her until she woke up. Fan her. Like, that's why you always see that in the background, all these period movies that you're watching. Like, that's what's going on. They they dance too hard. And they had to go. <laughs> <laughs> they so can't at this breathe. point, you're concerned for Eloise's health. You're like, girl. <laughs> Thank God for Coco Chanel. Thank <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> get us out of those corsets. Um, I mean, not me. But I would love to wear a corset. But yeah, no, get me know. in the corset. <laughs> <laughs> get me in the corset. You can take it off, throw it at me. <laughs> um but yeah i loved that she held that shot as long as she did basically for the whole sequence of music you get that yeah it had to have been at least two and a half minutes like it was beautifully done it was and it was it was hard like yeah. you know like just and it's like oh because when in the earlier in the film when she had asked Marianne um or she had said she remembers the first time she wanted to kiss her and then Marianne like tried to guess like well was it at the like the party or the festival or whatever and she was like no well before and then she asked Marianne when uh to tell her when she wanted to kiss her um and she never really revealed the first time she wanted to kiss Marianne and i always thought it was at the piano when she was playing that yeah. song. Like, yeah. I was like, it's that piano scene. And so when, when this came up, I was like, oh, it's the first time she wanted to kiss Marianne. <laughs> Jeez. Just crying all over the place. Loving it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Beautiful film. Beautifully photographed. Beautifully acted. Beautifully costumed. Mm-hmm. Beautifully cast, too. These people were incredible. Um, I thought the the Sophie, the girl who plays Sophie, um, oh, what's her name? Not that I'll be able to say her name. <laughs> beautifully French, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the the beautifully French name of the French girl that played Sophie. Uh, she, I was convinced during that. I've seen I I've seen the movie twice. I saw it like a month or two ago. Um, oh, it had to have been like a month or two ago. Like um, these days, I don't. Know. <laughs> like I don't know what day it is. Uh, <laughs> but um, when I first saw, and I, and I watched it last night in prep for for today. Uh, but when I first saw it, I thought it was Danny DeVito's daughter, and I can't remember her name, Susan DeVito or whatever. She was in Deadbeat, and she oh, she's in like yeah. a few things. And I was like, is that a DeVito? Is that a French <laughs> DeVito? <laughs> Uh, Luana ba- Barami. Luana Barami. She was beautifully acting that whole thing. Uh, yeah, and she was so. I don't know. She was so like motherly and nurturing, but it like was, it was just it was. It's hard to explain. It's just it wasn't over the top. It wasn't. She just naturally fit into it really well. I don't know. It was just yeah. everybody just did a great job with this. Everybody, whoever, everybody working on this film deserves something. Yeah, I agree. So good. The speaking of deserves something, it was not. It was in 2019, right? Mm-hmm. It was not submitted for uh, the Oscars. It won a bunch of awards for other um, international like prizes. I think it won something at uh, TIFF. Uh, but France uh, didn't submit. Portrait of a Lady on Fire to the Oscars as their international movie. Instead, they submitted some rendition of uh, Les Miserables. Like we need we one needed of that other. again. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Didn't want it the first time. <laughs> yeah, and when, dude, when I, <laughs> when I learned that, I was like, what an exciting time it would have been because Parasite won international and it won Best Picture. Mm-hmm. And I felt a lot more. I've seen both. I felt a lot more for this movie than I did for Parasite. Not that Parasite wasn't good, 
I still but, have to watch that. I really need to see it. Uh, but this movie like grabbed me like more. It felt like a cinematic masterpiece. Yeah, you know? and I mean it's on Criterion. Hello, I think its so. initial release is on Criterion. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I thought that would have been like great for international film you know yeah. for 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 foreign language films in an american competition uh and i wonder if that would have like if how that would have done against parasite international and whether or not it would be also nominated for best picture you know yeah especially since it did well in all other competitions it would have entered in you know I, it's just a well-received film in general. I haven't I heard haven't any heard a negative that. thing. Yeah, it's and it's worth it. If you have, it's on Hulu for everybody out there. If you have Hulu, yeah, um, and it's also on the Criterion Collection. I can't remember if it's already come out, but if it hasn't, it's something you can look forward to. Um, I, look, I look forward to purchasing it on Criterion. I absolutely will add this to my Criterion Collection. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, overall, what? Uh, how many toes? I. I want. I just want to say I often struggle with ratings, uh, just in general because <laughs> I I don't know movies are like of the moment, and so that's something I like to consider. But I mean, I watched this movie twice in like a month, and so I think I I really really loved it. So I'm gonna give it like ten toes, Jen. Wow. Yeah, I know. Oh, ten that's toesies. ten. Ten whole, two feet on the ground. Yeah, not breaking. Any Haynes code? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> well, neither is the one foot. The one foot is within. <laughs> the within. one foot is within. Yeah. Uh, I I would give this. A, I, I was because you know me. My my whole comparison is always Barry Lyndon. So yes, that's my ten toes. Um, there, you can have more than one ten toe. <laughs> I can, but I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> and I thought that too because my other ten toe is like Terminator Two. <laughs> <laughs> I would give this one I was going to say eight and a half toes um, nine nine could be I, I'd probably want to see it again I don't know it's eight yeah, and a half well, I, I think the reason level. I pushed it from nine to ten was that I was excited to watch it the second time like I was excited that we were doing this and I had a reason to re-watch a movie so soon yeah and i and i think because i'd also listened to the interviews and like uh things like that that like i was excited to watch it again with that knowledge yeah and i, was like, I think they should do a limited edition picture disc 45 yeah <laughs> that has like two pieces of music in it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <I do play. laughs> but i think it should have uh, the smudged painting on one side and the finished painting on the other. <gasps> beautiful. Oh my god, why am I not the designer of beautiful things? I mean, uh, you, can, you just gotta do it. And well, just do it for yourself. Don't expect anybody to pay you money, and then eventually somebody might pay you. But maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually, uh, I've been posting all my prints memorabilia on a, a separate Instagram. Yes. Secret separate one. The, uh, <laughs> uh, the Getty prints? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I created another one. Uh, um, but yeah, I've been posting it. Actually, the funny thing about that Instagram is that originally it was Portrait of a Yeti on Fire was the name oh, yeah. of it. And <laughs> I changed it to Yeti Prince Collection, uh, which I'm kind of mad about because I think <laughs> Portrait of a Yeti on Fire is such a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I should have kept it, but whatever. Who cares? Um, you still have the drawing by that title, which was good. I really enjoyed yes, that. Yeah, that's still on my my. In, we drew portrait in. at the same time. <laughs> we did, yeah, we did. Although I haven't seen the movie yet, I just loved being funny. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it still worked. But I've been going through and posting all that, and I noticed how hardcore I wanted to do that growing up, like design albums and and mm -hmm. artwork or just. Not necessarily the artwork, but like I want to design the packaging for things. I've always wanted to do that. Well, I like isn't that what children. Mondo does? Mondo does. Yeah, Mondo does that. Criterion does that. For God's sakes, like oh yeah, that's true. One of those two. Prince isn't around anymore, but I can still 
designed things for his work because they're yeah. still releasing it. Anyway, not the point. So, uh, what is your recommend? <gasps> oh, I didn't even think. I have like two. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead with yours. Uh, I have Seraphin, which I don't remember what year it was. I own it on DVD. Um, it is a gorgeous French film about a, a obscure artist, female artist. And it's called Seraphin. Uh, it is so fucking beautiful. I think it's definitely something that people should see. I don't think a lot of, you know, it's one of those underground cult classic kind of things for weird artists like me. <laughs> so, so definitely that. Um, I also kind of wanted to say, uh, um, Girl with the Pearl Earring. I love that film. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And it's, again, the relationship between artist and model. Um, but beautifully done. I thought, I mean, I, I believe it's, for the most part, fiction. But it's kind of, you know, like fiction, but in realistic terms. Like it's about Vermeer painting that painting. But it's a fictionalized version of who the person in the painting was and all that kind of anyway whatever but the same quality of um attention to the way that the artist works yeah because that fascinates me i i love watching films about artists and how they work and that that one definitely does that for you so yeah I'm having a hard time recommending John. Uh, there, I know something that a lot of people compare this movie to um, is a movie I haven't seen. Uh, Call me by your name, I guess, no. is something like <laughs> is something uh, similar. Like you know, love in a short spirit, uh, span of time, and then like well, I told leaving you, that for reality. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, like any LGBTQ plus <laughs> movie, um, we'll, we'll never be happy. I'll <laughs> have to leave at the end. <laughs> uh, seriously, that happens a lot. Like that movie well, Weekend. I mean, throughout awesome. history, that's always been like a thing, you know? Yeah. Like it's only like, like when when were the queers allowed to to marry nationwide, <laughs> not just state by state, but like nationwide? It was. Like five Nobody years wanted to marry me, so I didn't pay attention. That's hilarious. Lee, true. Absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I knew what happened. Well, I was, was like, good for them. Good for the gays. <laughs> I would say, well, I guess another LGBT. I can't even remember the name of it. It had that one girl who played Zan in um, First Girl I Love. Whatever. I'm going to recommend a marriage story instead because of the blocking in a marriage story and the blocking in this movie. Also, like, I. Criterion release. Is it? Yeah. That's right on. just been announced. It's going to be its official release is Criterion. That is pretty good. Uh, the something in that film that That's I really enjoyed were like, were the long shots and like people walking in and out and the camera following them. It just, it seemed like a play. It seemed like they blocked it like a play. And the same happened in Portrait of a Lady on Fire, where, you know, like somebody would be in the shot and then somebody would talk off camera, but it wouldn't cut to them. It would either oh, pan to them in moment or they would enter the frame. But we like sat on that person because that's who we were following. You know what I mean? No, I love that. Yeah. I appreciate it. When you, it's funny, sometimes you watch subtitles, um, and I guess <laughs> it makes sense, but, like, if you watch things with subtitles, or, I don't think they did it for, I, I didn't watch, well, no, we did watch this one with subtitles, because it's French. Uh, <laughs> I totally didn't even put that together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how much it doesn't occur to me that I'm watching. I watch subtitles sometimes when I'm trying to watch, like, a show so early early in the morning before jason gets up and mm -hmm. i don't want it to be too loud so i put subtitles on and they'll always put like who's saying things if you can't see them yes <laughs> like so and so max also you know like you can't see him but he's saying something and i yeah, i was like the name in brackets yeah 
Uh, I don't think they did that for for this. I don't recall. I don't recall that. Yeah, I don't remember that. But I could hear it. So, I was... <laughs> in fact, I had it pretty low. And I usually do watch foreign films on a low volume anyway for some reason because I'm reading it anyway. So I, yeah, I really don't think to turn it up very loud. But I, Jason walked in when I was watching this, and he's like, "Why did you turn it up?" And I was like, "They're speaking French. I don't know. <laughs> I have to read it anyway." He's like, but it's such a beautiful language. Turn it up. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is true. It, it was very beautiful. Um, French is always beautiful. So is Italian. Yeah. So so are other languages. Languages in general. Uh, maybe not German. Uh, <laughs> that's me. But I've met German people and they've said the same thing. I, I, yeah, it, it seems to be um, a common... Uh, understanding that the it's is, it's a it's a, a sterner, more harsh, yeah, not very attractive. But I mean, I'd be willing to watch a German love story. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like watching like a uh, like Japanese films. Um, in fact, I, I don't think it's necessarily period Japanese films. I think it's just the acting style in Japan is just different i mean i think nowadays it's a little more like evened out but there's um females females especially would like yell all the time like i mean anime kind of does that too like where you have like everybody's yelling i mean that's just women in general john nobody's willing to listen to us (laughs) they've got to yell to be heard but um (laughs) No, but they, they do. They have like this thing. I don't, every time I watch a Japanese one, I'm like, you know, it'd be so much nicer if they weren't yelling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, rhythmically, especially with older Japanese films, like there was a lot of like, like you could hear the punctuation, like stop, you know, like mm. sentence, 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 stop. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I thought it was funny when, uh, they trans was it uh my neighbor Totoro, uh-huh. and one of the Fannings had to do all that dialogue. She said because Miyazaki is very specific about how it is uh, translated and yeah. recorded. Like you can't miss anything. It has to be exactly what he said in Japan, but it has to be trans whatever. But in order for it to work, uh. The Fanning girl, I can't remember which one it was, L maybe, or maybe it was Dakota Fanning. Uh, she said that she basically had to like yell out these lines so quickly just to match the mouth movements of the characters and like all that kind of stuff. So she, she had to, <laughs> like the way that she had to yell, she said it was just very awkward, but it, it ended up working. But yeah, uh, she had, had to match the yeah. rhythm of it. But that, I think that's just the style, like the, the way that they they do that. I don't know. It's interesting. Not the point at all. So, good job. Good times. Wonderful. Look at us go. Look at us go. Social distancing. Yeah, and for the record, um, to those of you listening and may or may not have been expecting a Sense and Sensibility episode, I can't remember if we announced it in the last one. I can't um, remember if we did. I don't. I don't think so. But we... Uh, I messed up and lost the uh, recording. Uh, well, lost my half of the recording. John had his. Yeah. <laughs> we could just post my my. End <laughs> it's like a dead silent. Like you <laughs> you say something and it's just nothing. Um, <laughs> we uh, uh, yeah. So we recorded. We're recording this the day before. It's pretty last minute, and I was really excited. Because um, John, there it is, uh, Dakota Fanning. Oh, okay. Um, I was <laughs> scrolling through my notes. Um, John was like, why don't we watch something like both of us have seen? I haven't seen Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I was like, watch it. <laughs> watch that now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, I, when it was between this and uh, The Lighthouse, right? Yeah. I'm kind of glad we did this one because I wanted to see it anyway. Yeah, and I would have done the lighthouse. I've seen the lighthouse. Yeah, the light, lighthouse. just like portrait. I have I have a piece of art for the lighthouse that I'm going to post. Um. Oh, let me see. Oh, 
I mean, this hand is garbage, and I'm like reaching so far away, but <laughs> that's so cute. Um, yeah, I the sense and sensibility, we might do it again. That's I think point. we should. I really enjoyed recording that and discussing that, and I think I was drinking or maybe had drunk that day, so I think I can replicate my stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I just thought maybe we should do something different because. It's so, so soon. soon. Afterwards, I don't want to keep you know saying it. I, I said this before. I said this before. <laughs> yeah, like, did I already say this? Did I say this already? Yeah. Uh, so I figured if we gave it time and then we can come back to it. But that that is one of my favorite films. And I, I look forward to us doing that again. I, I enjoyed that recording a lot. Yeah. I just love, I think that was one of the the times where it didn't occur to me that we were recording a podcast. And it was just you and me having a good conversation about a film that I absolutely freaking love. So yes. That was the thing. <laughs> um, so we, we, we had a great conversation about one of my favorite films. So that makes me happy. Um, anyway, so uh, look us up. We are on Instagram. At One uh, Foot Podcast. Thank you. We're also at One Foot Podcast on Twitter, One Foot on the Ground on Facebook, and One Foot Podcast at gmail.com if you want to email any questions, concerns, uh i don't know why i say questions or concerns but if you have them go for it uh or if you want to make recommendations for other features or better recommendations than i gave for lady on a uh, lady on fire jason had some i have to ask him what they were again yeah yeah anyway <laughs> uh and until next time bye-bye